inside your heart I won't hide again It's been so fun celebrating these Goodness of God videos of how God transforms our lives. And this weekend, we're going to be looking at Jason Howell, who is our campus pastor at South Umpqua. It's been so fun for me to watch God develop you and bring you along. And in some ways, we come from opposite sides, where I grew up in the church and you know, I didn't want to be a pastor because my dad was, and you didn't grow up in a church and didn't even think about being a pastor. And yet it's the same grace of God that's drawn us from different places. But we want to explore, how did God work to bring you to a place where you believed him? Yeah, so from a young age, um, I got involved in, in drugs and quickly became addicted. And that pretty much dominated my teenage years. And um, when I was about 19 years old, I was arrested as a result of this lifestyle and really just came to the end of myself. I had lost everything of value. Uh, my friends, my family uh, didn't trust me. Uh, I could no longer live at home. I lived at a homeless shelter. Um, I lost my car, which was a huge possession to me to lose. And so I just lost everything of value and I came to the end of myself, really. And Kind of hit bottom there. Yeah. And... Um, there was a family in the shelter who loved Jesus and, and were willing to sit with me and answer questions and mm. walk me through the gospel. And I remember one night in my room just saying, God, I don't know who you are, but I want to spend the rest of my life figuring that out. Mm. Mm. Wow. And that's such a poignant moment where you are kind of, as they say, hitting bottom and looking up and God has somebody there right at that time, mm -hmm. which just reminds us, whenever we're trying to share with somebody, God has already been at work preparing mm -hmm. them. And so from that point on, did you start going to church right away? Or what were some changes that came about? Yeah, so I, I went to a Bible study that they put on in the library at the shelter. And, and it was a period of just learning, what does this mean now? I'm a follower of Jesus. What do I do with that? Had you read the Bible before? No, no. Uh, <laughs> as a joke at times, yes, but <laughs> never seriously. Um, and uh, so I, I began to go to that study, and they encouraged me to get involved in a church, but I never really did. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't a, a high priority for me. Um, we had, I had kind of shopped around, but didn't really do much with that. And so it wasn't really until I met my wife, my future, soon-to-be wife, Shaughnessy, that we got plugged into a church. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about that. How did God give you a family in the midst? I mean, you talk about how yeah. you were broken down and everything is falling apart. Yeah. How did God begin rebuilding your world? Yeah, so a piece at a time. And uh, as I went through uh, a court pro program, I got some counseling and some therapy to come overcome and work through some of the stuff that was leading and causing my addiction. And uh, part of that was you could go to church instead of going to these programs, which I way <laughs> preferred church than some of the programs that they, they wanted me to go to. And so I met my wife, Shaughnessy, at The Sizzler. We both worked there. I was a cook. She was a waitress, and it was love at first sight. Um, and we began dating, and at church was a high priority for her. She grew up in a Christian home. Her dad was a pastor, and um, this was something that was just a regular rhythm in her life. And so she began kind of helping me see the value of getting into community. And now you have children together? Yeah, we got, we got three. Good. And they're real, we, they were one right after another. We were like, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. So, um, Amberlynn, Asher, and Audra. Amberlynn's 10, Asher's eight, Audra's seven. Amberlynn, Asher, Audra. Yeah. And uh, I love to hear the stories you tell about them because they're such a part of your messages and of your life. And I, yeah. I think I see in you the same thing as in myself is, I'm trying to teach them some things, and God's using them to teach me a lot of things. Exactly. Um, and I think you never quite understand the Father heart of God mm. in the same way until you're a parent, and you begin to understand better how He sees us. Yeah. So God has brought you kind of to a place of stability, a place of sobriety. Now mm. He's developing you spiritually. Um, how did you... Find out that God said, I want you to be involved in vocational ministry. I want you mm -hmm. to serve me. How did that come about? Yeah, a piece at a time again. We had just moved back from Spokane. Shortly after we got married, we moved to Spokane for a couple of years, had kids, and realized we can't do this without our family. We need our mamas. <laughs> and so we moved back home and got plugged into Sutherland Camp. It's a family church. 
And uh, I remember still, it was early in 2013, Pastor Paul was on stage and he was teaching the Catalyst series about the mission of God and serving others. And God was just tapping on my heart. And I was a blubbering mess at the moment. I'm an emotional guy, okay? And so I'm sitting there in the pew crying, trying to hold it together because my in-laws are there and I want, don't want to Im- <laughs> make a fool of myself. But uh, and I came up to Paul after the service and said, I don't know what this means, but I know I need to begin serving here at Family Church. And so that was the kind of initial stage. And I got involved in the youth ministry at the Green Campus and was really mentored by the campus pastor and the youth pastor for quite a season until they said, hey, what do you think about leading this thing? (laughs) uh, I'm kind of the reluctant leader. And so um, they called out what they saw in me and they they said, we think you can do this. Let's try it out. And so there was a transition and a season where they kind of held my hand through that. And uh, God really showed up and uh, in ways that I did not expect. And and uh, used that time really to grow me as a leader, um, but also hopefully the students that we were shepherding as well. I love that that combination of how you're talking about the fact that that the Holy Spirit speaks to you. And you know, I remember you coming forward and you just had this sort of ill-formed, I just want to do something. <laughs> and I thought, great, we can work with that. But I think of how God put a community around you mm-hmm. and how there are people that are, you know, they were operating in a level of ministry that you could begin to interface with and start small and piece at a time. And I I think that's been a wonderful thing that God's developed here at Family Church is to to see if we can develop leaders. And Mm -hmm. some people have, you know, a tremendous capacity and some people have a place that this is where I'm going to just fit and stay. And that's where I want to be, the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. And so it's been fun to watch you. And I, I didn't know where your spot is. And one of the things that I've seen, um, it seemed like when you first began to speak, I, I know you had a fun time the first time you spoke in the youth group, and I think the first time you spoke at church, um, even though you came across very uh, calm and very uh, well-spoken, it just about devastated you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so how has God developed your capacity so that you are able to serve at the level he, that you're serving now? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> it's kind of a mystery to me, um, but I do remember those moments where early on in communicating, after church, I just wanted to go curl up in a ball in a dark room alone and just introvert. Um, and over time, as I continued to you know, step into those uh, more speaking and stepping into that, it was the capacity grew. And, and really the only way I can explain it is God multiplied my capacity beyond what I could have experienced or done for myself. Mm-hmm. How, how do you recharge? What helps you kind of get the energy back in your system? I love wrestling with my kids. I almost always win. Okay, so <laughs> that just so far. <laughs> fills me up right away. Um, yeah, they're not teenagers yet, but that's, you know, doing things with my family. Um, and we love the outdoors. We love going backpacking and hiking. And so those are some of the ways that we recharge as well, just getting out as a family into God's creation. Okay. So did you like school when you were in high school? No. No, I barely skated through high school. <laughs> My mom pushed me through high school. Let's put it that way. So, so you've come all this way now to where you are. I mean, Jason is a great reader and he reads theological books. And uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about how you went from not being a student to being that kind of a student? Yeah, um, I, I believe theology is really important because we are all living out what we believe about God. We are, if you'll give me the term, a living theology. And I believe that if I'm operating in the dark and not being challenged by other theological viewpoints, I can become lopsided and really live from a perspective of who Jason thinks God is instead of who God claims himself to be. And so theology has always been very important to me since my early walk with Jesus. And so how, did you just start reading theology books on your own or how did that come about? Mostly, yes. I, I got a, uh, a systematic theology by Wayne Grudem for a Christmas present one year. <laughs> and I was like, this is awesome. I didn't know this kind of book existed and just kind of took off from there. Did you take any training then? Yeah. So I pursued a uh, diploma in ministry studies through Rockbridge Seminary um, several years ago. I, 
I am excited. Um, Jason's going to be taking over the leadership of the teaching team. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's been one of the positions, that one of the hats that I've worn. And uh, that doesn't mean that he's going to be speaking two-thirds of the time. It means that when we get together in our planning times, um, he's going to be one of the ones that's pulling together the agenda, tr pressing us towards uh, what we're going to talk about. Um, and I'm excited to see as he and Greg and, and Jeremy and Drew and the, the team that's replacing or taking some of the place that I had. Um, and you're asking good questions. And uh, he's now setting the agenda for the teaching meeting. And it's like, wow, I wish I'd have thought of that. And yet it's a wonderful thing to see that God develops us. And when a new person steps in, their gifting and their bent then flavors and shapes the team in a wonderful way to make it more rounded and more more complete. So it's exciting to see. And if I think of you over here from not even wanting to go to school, not interested in church, not interested in God, to somebody who's reading theology books, it's like, that's such a beautiful picture. And and it's been pretty fast. How long since you were at point A to where you are today? Yeah, less than 10 years. We, we began coming to Family Church, I believe, in November or December of 2012. So, yeah. Yeah. So I think there's two th good things to say out of that. One is it takes time for God to transform us. And J Jason has been leaning into it and he's had good mentors around him. And it's been a what I would call an accelerated process to go from walking in the door the first time to being on stage as a speaker. Has God brought you to some new things? And, and what are you looking forward to at South Umqua? Yeah, I think God has brought us through one of the most difficult seasons for our campus and shown himself to be faithful over and again. And I couldn't be more excited about the people and our community there. Um, it really does feel like family church. Uh, and we are capturing the mission and, and running with the vision. And so I believe the, the best years for our campus are ahead of us. It's wonderful to see God at work, and I think there's going to be awesome things as God continues to, to develop you and use you, and it's going to be a great, a great strength and a boon for Family Church. I won't hide again.